Numbers 1317, file number 21, Research and Discovery on the Sanctuary and Liberty of Conscience Threatened. Esther and the Last Day Events. The purpose of this study is to demonstrate the similitude between the decree of death prepared to exterminate the Jews under the Persian government in Esther's time and the final decree to be written against those who refuse to worship the beast and its image at the time of the end. The importance of the book of Esther in history. Study Bible, Team Esther Introduction, page 559. The Babylonian captivity marks a distinct break in Jewish national life. For a time, the stream of Jewish history disappeared and ran underground, and when it reappeared, its whole character was changed. The Jews were no longer so much a nation as they were a people in a church. The Bible contains no history of the exile and of post-exilic times as history is usually defined, but the spirit of the period is admirably conveyed in the narratives of Daniel and Esther. These two books need to be read regarding religious liberty. The book of Esther is one of the five roles that have been, for ancient times, read in every synagogue on the five festal occasions of the year. Continuing from the same book, if I perish, I perish. The book of Esther depicts a crisis in the fortunes of God's people that threaten them with annihilation. The instrument of deliverance is a Jewish, adasse meaning myrtle, elevated from a quiet life with her cousin and foster parents Mordecai to be queen of a world empire. The narrative display Esther, her Persian name meaning star, as a woman of clear judgment, remarkable self-control, and noble self-sacrifice. The challenge of Mordecai, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this, projected the youthful queen to the heights of heroic action. In solemn dignity, her spirit rose to answer the demand of the hour in a courageous and thrilling words. I, if I perish, she said, I perish. The scepter was held, continuing from the same book. When at the critical moment the scepter was held out to her, she did not immediately identify the villain, but with remarkable restraint and deliberate care, guided the king and Eman into a situation calculated to be most favorable to her purpose. Fiction could not conceive of a more dramatic and surprising series of coincidences that, than those that led up to the exposure and death of Amon. In Purim, the Feast of Lots, the Jews ever commemorate heaven's disposal of Amon's evil plan, which a lot had presumably educated would succeed. And now we have the personage and their significance for the Bible time. The king, Esther, Mordecai, Amen, the decree, and the scepter. Who are they? The king of Persia is a church and state government, just like Babylon was a church and state government, just like Greece was a church and state government, and Rome was and intend to become again a church and state government. Esther, a Jewish and Israelitess, a pure woman often represents a type of the pure church in the Bible, the church at the end. Mordecai, a type of counselor, guide to Esther the queen as the Holy Spirit, the Bible, and the spirit of prophecy guide through the final events. So here we're creating a parallel between the time of Esther and the time of the end when we will lose our freedom of religion, freedom of conscience. All freedom will be removed. Amen, second to the king, a prime minister of government, a type of those elected at the end who will bring a Sunday law. They will hate all those who will not want to abide by their decree and will push for a death decree to destroy the dissidents. The decree, 
an official decree with the king's seal was sent out to destroy the Jews on a certain day. Enacted on the 13th day of the first month of the lunar calendar, and this would correspond to the night of Passover, in order to calculate the 14th day, you have to follow the 13th day. And the first month tells us that it's the new year, it's the new moon of the time for a, re a revealing of the time that this is happening. It's a beautiful teaching. So as we look into it carefully, we continue here. Now, the decree was enforced one year later, the 13th day of the 12th month, which is Adar. So that is a very important detail. The scepter, Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8 says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. The scepter Christ offers is a scepter of righteousness, is character, is daily ring in our life. Satan offers a scepter of wickedness, a ring of terror and destruction in the soul and upon the earth to be witnessed upon. And of course, that has not occurred yet. In the days of Queen Esther, we're reading from Prophets and Kings, which is part of the conflict series, which we encourage you greatly to read those five books that they are, because again, you will find a lot of circumstances in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy of losing our freedom of religion. Comfortable in Babylon. And we're reading again from Prophet and Kings. Under the favor shown them by Cyrus, nearly 50,000 of the children of the captivity had taken advantage of the decree permitting their return. These, however, in comparison with the hundreds of thousands scattered throughout the province of Medo-Persia, were but a mere remnant. The great majority of the Israelites had chosen to remain in the land of their exile rather than undergo the hardships of the return journey and the reestablishment of their desolated city and homes. Trouble is coming. Get out of her, my people. A score or more of years, a score in the Bible is 20, a score or more of years pass by when a second decree, quite as favorable as the first, was issued by Darius Estapis, the monarch then ruling. Thus did God in mercy provide another opportunity for the Jews in the Middle Persians realm to return to the land of their fathers. The Lord foresaw the troubles time that were to follow during the reign of Xerxes, the Ahasuerus of the book of Esther. And he not only wrought a change of feelings in the hearts of men in authority, but also inspired Zechariah to plead with the exiles to return. Ho, ho, does he say in chapter 2, verses 6 to 9, come forth, flee from the land of the north, was the message given the scattered tribes of Israel who had become settled in many lands far from their former home. I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, said the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, after thy glory had he sent me unto the nation which spoiled you. For he that touched you toucheth the apple of Dinah of his eyes. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and he shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Some choose to listen and learn, a remnant. It was still the Lord's purpose as it had been from the beginning, that his people should be a praise in the earth to the glory of his name. During the long years of their exile, he had given them many opportunities to return to their allegiance to him. Some had chosen to listen and to learn. Some had found salvation in the midst of affliction. Many of these were to be numbered among the remnant that should return. They were likened by expiration to the highest branch of the high cedar, which was to be planted upon a high mountain and eminent in the mountain of the height of Israel. This was taken from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 and 23. Some flee from the cities, but the majority stay. It was those whose spirit God has raised under Ezra, chapter 1, verse 5, who had returned under the decree of Cyrus. 
but God ceased not to plead with those who voluntarily remained in the land of their exile. And through manifold agencies, he made it possible for them also to return. The large number, however, of those who failed to return to the decree of Osiris remained unimpressible to later influences. And even when Zechariah warned them to flee from Babylon without further delay, they did not heed the invitation. Refusing the way of escape, now they face death. Meanwhile, conditions in the Middle Persian realm were rapidly changing. Various Estapes, under whose reign the Jews had been shown marked favor, were succeeded by Xerxes the Great. It was during his reign that those of the Jews who had failed of heeding the message to flee were called upon to face a terrible crisis. Having refused to take advantage of the way to escape God had provided, now they were brought face to face with death. Amen is a type of those who will hate all Sabbath keepers. Though Amen the Agagite, an unscrupulous man high in authority in Medo Persia, or true Amen, Satan worked at this time to counterwork the purposes of God. Amen cherished bitter malice against Mordecai, a Jew. Mordecai had done Amen no harm, but had simply refused to show him worshipful, worshipful reverence. This is very interesting because. We're talking here, again, worshiping a man, which is a representation of the worship of the beast or the dragon. Scorning to lay hands on Mordecai alone, Amen plotted to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Misled by the enemy, the United States government will enact a Sunday law culminating in a death decree against God's people at the end. Now, as we continue to read right now those quotes from Prophet and Kings, we're making a parallel between the last day events under the USA when the Sunday law is passed and it will bring us to a death decree. And still we are in the book of Esther analyzing the event. So it's a parallel presenting the last day event and the book of Esther. Misled by the false statement of Haman, Xerxes was induced to issue a decree providing for the massacre of all the Jews scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the Middle Persian kingdom. A certain day was appointed in which the Jews were to be destroyed and their property confiscated. Little did the king realize the far-reaching result that would have accompanied the complete carrying out of this decree. Satan himself, the hidden instigator of the scheme, was trying to rid the earth of those who preserved the knowledge of the true God. So therefore, a universal Sunday law by a church state government will bring persecution and death. In every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. The decree of the Medes and Persians could not be revoked. Apparently, there was no hope. All the Israelites were doomed to destruction. Christ, our intercessor, still pleads for us in the most holy place, but for our long. So again, we're presenting the two together showing the last day event along with the book of Esther how parallel it is but the plots of the enemy were defeated by a power that reigns among the children of man in the providence of God Esther a Jewess who feared the most high had been made queen of the middle Persian kingdom Mordecai was a near relative of hers in their extremity they decided to appeal to Xerxes in behalf of their people Esther was to venture into his presence as an intersexer. Who know it, said Mordecai, whether the art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mordecai, the cousin, was trying to encourage her to go through her mission, no matter how scary it sounded. Mordecai and Esther are a type of the 144,000 ready to live or perish to vindicate the Heavenly Father. The crisis that Esther faced demanded quick 
earnest action, but both she and Mordecai realized that unless God should work mightily in their behalf, their own efforts would be unavailing. So Esther took time for communion with God, the source of her strength. Go, she directed Mordecai, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maiden will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. The Lord had renewed her strength. And now she wanted to take the position that was assigned to her. What a beautiful example. At last, the saints are delivered by the voice of God, which gives the day and hour of Christ's coming. The event that followed in rapid succession, the appearance of Esther before the king, the marked favor shown her, the banquets of the king and queen with Amen as the only guest, the travel sleep of the king, the public honor, Mordecai and humiliation and fall of Amen upon the discovery of his wicked plot. All these are part of a familiar story. So that's why we encourage you to read, to read the book of Esther in order to get more detail of as to the narration. God wrought marvelously for his penitent people and a counter decree issued by the king allowing them to fight for their lives was rapidly communicated to every part of the realm by mounted couriers who were hastening and pressed on by the king's commandment. And in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandments and his decree came, the, Jew, uh, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Angels that excel in strength were commissioned to protect his people. On the day appointed for the destruction, the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king of Assyria to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. Angels that excel in strength had been commissioned by God to protect his people while they stood for their lives. This demanded lots of fate because now they were facing sure destruction the people of god will reign at last which with christ their king of kings and they shall have peace mordecai was given the position of honor formerly occupied by Amen. he was next unto king Osiris and great among the jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren and he sought to promote the welfare of israel Thus did God bring his chosen people once more into favor at the Persian, Middle Persian court, making possible the carrying out of his purpose to restore them to their own land. But it was not until several years later, in the seventh year of Artaxerxes I, the successor of Xerxes the Great, that any considerable number returned to Jerusalem under Ezra. The trying experiences of Esther are for those who live in the last days of earth history. So you have to understand the parallel and how important this book it is for the last day event. The trying experiences that come that came to God people in the days of Esther were not peculiar to that age alone. The revelator looking down the ages to the close of time has declared the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Some who today are living on the earth will see these words fulfilled. The same spirit that in age past led men to persecute the true church will in the future lead to the pursuance of similar course toward those who maintain their loyalty to God. Even now, Preparation are being made for this last great conflict. The Sabbath keepers are a type of Mordecai at the gate, keeping alive the law of God. 
The decree that will finally go forth against the remnant people of God will be very similar to that issued by Assyrus against the Jews. Today, the enemies of the true church see in the little company keeping the Sabbath commandment and Mordecai at the gate. The reverence of God's people for his law is a constant rebuke to those who have cast off the fear of the Lord and are trampling on his Sabbath. In conclusion, today, as in the day of Esther and Mordecai, the Lord will vindicate his truth and his people. Satan will arouse indignation against the minority who refuse to accept popular customs and tradition. Men of position and reputation will join with the lawless and the vile to take counsel against the people of God. Wealth, genius, education will combine to cover them with contempt. Persecuting rulers, ministers, and church members will conspire against them. With voice and pen, by boasts, threats, and ridicule, they will seek to overthrow their faith. By false representation and angry appeals, men will stir up the passions of the people. Not having a thus saith the scriptures to bring against the advocates of the Bible Sabbath, they will resort to oppressive enactments to supply the lack. To, se to secure popularity and patronage, legislators will yield to the demand for Sunday laws. But those who fear God cannot accept an institution that violates a precept of the Decalogue. On this battlefield will be fought the last great conflict in the controversy between truth and error. And we are not left in doubt as to the issue. Today, as in the day of Esther and Mordecai, the Lord will vindicate his truth and his people. We were reading from Prophets and Kings, page 598 to 606. May the Lord bless you as you continue to study and read those wonderful books of the Bible, 66 of them, and the book of the conflict series, five of them, plus many, many more which are offered in our libraries.